we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace and your mercy that has brought us thus far. We pray, oh God, that you would speak a word to us because we need to hear from you. We open our hearts and say, speak, Lord. Be glorified, let demons be terrified, and let your people be edified. And because we believe you for this, we say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Jesus Christ is the way. John 14 and 6 declares that. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father. But we honor the Lord today for his goodness and for this opportunity to stand before you one more time. We thank God for our pastor in his absence, to the ministerial staff. Amen. To the deacons and trustees, saints, and friends, we greet you in the marvelous, mighty name of Jesus Christ. I didn't realize that was one of my favorite songs. I remember that song. The reason I needed them to sing it again is because it reminded me, amen, of the revival that God had poured out upon the people of God, amen, in this church as a result of our committal to him and our commitment to seeking the face of God, amen, to pray in it, to call it on his name, which brings me to this particular scripture whereby it says, if my people, which are called by my name, 2 Chronicles seven fourteen, would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. Amen. There's so many topics I could use under the umbrella of if my people. I was thinking about the conjunctions, amen, that if and the and and the and and the then. And I was thinking, amen, about how God answers prayer. Amen. A lot of times we don't pray because we don't believe that God answers prayer. But carefully and prayerfully looking at this particular portion of scripture in this book of Second Chronicles, which is a historical book. Amen. The Bible is broken up to, into sections. Amen. We have the books of law. We have the poetic books. We have the historical books. We have the letters. Amen. We have the gospels. Amen. But this particular book is a, a historical book. You know, and the problem sometimes arises because we don't have no understanding of our history. We don't understand the history. And if you don't know where you came from, it's hard to know where you're going. You know, I was reading further into this chapter, amen, in the previous chapter throughout the course of this week. The sixth chapter, amen, is where Solomon began to pray. Amen. God had put it in David's heart to build a house for the Lord. Amen. To dedicate a house to the Lord. So he built a house for the Lord and then he built a house for himself. And now when the house was complete, amen, this was a time of dedication, a time of consecration. Amen. In the Bible and the New Testament it lets us know that we are that house. That we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. That we, amen, are we, we are, amen, the vessels whereby the Holy Spirit desires to dwell. And so Solomon had completed this marvelous work. And, 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 and as he finished this work, he began to pray to God. He began to dedicate this. And, and, and I thank God for, amen, the experience of dedication. Amen, whatever God gives you, wherever you go, whatever you receive from God, you need to dedicate it to God. Problem comes is sometimes we're very selfish. Sometimes we're very self-centered and self-righteous and we, amen, think about just ourselves. Amen. But this prayer, oh hallelujah, is a prayer of committing back to God what God had gave, given him the ability to accomplish. There's no great accomplishment outside of the will of God. And sometimes, you know, we tend to forget where God has brought us from. Sometimes we tend to forget how God has picked us up and turned us around and brought us out of darkness into the marvelous light. Sometimes we forget about the mercies of God, grace of God. We 
forget about it. God doesn't want us to forget his goodness. God doesn't want us to think it's ours. You know, the reason why I in the church is a lot half empty most of the time is because we forgot the purpose and the objective of God. It's not about us. It's about those who are coming into the new building across the street. It's about the person that's wounded and the person that is hurting and the person that is suffering. God doesn't want us to forget. We say it's my church, it's not yours, it's God's. Whatever position you have, it came from God. And I, I need to share because, oh my God, I was, I was sitting there and the spirit, and I'm like, God said that he's about to bring judgment for the things that we've overlooked. The things that we swept under the rug. There's some things that we know that are not right, that we know are wrong, and we have known for many, many years. And we've allowed those, God, I am, God says I'm going about to bring my judgment based on your unwillingness to stand and to take action against these things. Just needed to get that out because I didn't want to say it. You know, sometimes when God will give you a word and you say, me, me, why? Do I have to? You know, sometimes the word of God is not always easy. But I love this particular portion of scripture where Solomon had finished praying. And see, you know, God answers prayer. Hallelujah. Why is the prayer service the least attended service? I, why, amen, do we do everything else but pray? Why do we get so caught up into so many things other than prayer? I, I come to let you know because prayer is working. Prayer, amen, demands a certain type of lifestyle. And so when we're not committed to live that type of lifestyle, we feel like we can just go ahead on, amen, and we neglect, amen, the most important task of the church, uh, which is the prayer, amen, the desire and the requirement of God for the people of God to pray. You see, when you pray, you can't shack up. When you pray, amen, you can't come and sit in the choir and know you're sleeping with somebody else. When you pray, amen, you can't go home and watch pornography. When you pray, you can't rob God and steal and talk all nasty and all kind of ways to people. When you pray. So because people don't want to let these things go, they'll just continue those things and neglect prayer. There's no way you can be mean to people and have a prayer life. The, way, the reason you can be mean is because you don't have a prayer life. The reason you can act in way is because you don't know who God is, because you don't spend time with God. When you know who God is, you can't live in sin. You can't act like everything is right when you know it's wrong. And that's why they talked about forgiveness this morning. Amen. You can walk around and be mad at somebody for 10 and 50. The devil is a liar. Because I pray, even if you've done me wrong, I got to go to you and say I'm sorry just because I want to make it right and I want to keep the connection open with God. It don't matter what you did. It don't matter who started it. Because I've been born again, filled with the real Holy Ghost, not this new stuff that they got out here. When you can live any kind of way, you can act any kind of way talking about I'm born again. The devil is a liar. When you're born again, there's a certain lifestyle about you. There's a certain aura about you. People know that there's something different about you because you've been with Jesus. This stuff doesn't happen at choir rehearsal. It doesn't happen on Sunday morning. But it's the alone time. 
It's the alone time that you spend with the Father that causes you to want to love everybody. It's the alone time. It's the quiet time. You know, it's the committed time. And you gotta find a time, whatever, whatever time works for you. I love the mornings, it works for me. But you gotta find a time that works where you can call on God, where you can be in fellowship. Look, I have a wonderful day every day because I start my day with prayer. I get to work early, and I'm not saying it's boastfully, I'm saying by the grace of God. When the teachers come into the building, I'm already there, sitting there reading my scriptures. And I, you know, I was in the hall, I was in the lounge the other day, and you know, I got a prayer partner because a prayer partner is very important. Somebody that's going to rely on you, that's going to make you accountable, amen, so you can pray so that you can walk right, so that you can live right, so that God gets the glory, and I was on the phone with my prayer partner, and one of the teachers walked in, and you know we was in the middle of it, <laughs> I go shut up, we were praying, I tell you, and you know I kind of felt awkward because the door opened up, but I can't stop because it's the Holy Ghost. And I said, okay, brother, God bless you. Thank you. I'll see you later. She said, no, I'm so sorry that I walked in on you, but I'm so glad that I walked in on you, but I'm so sorry, but I'm so glad that I walked in because I needed that. She needed the prayer. And that's, that's how you know that it's not for show. It's not to be ignored. The Bible talks about praying in front of people and praying to be heard and praying to be seen and praying for recognition and praying, amen, to say, I prayed and I, and I sang and, I, and you know we sang and we tore it up and, and you know he preached and he, the devil is a liar. The glory goes to God. And then I get here. So, Solomon, had prayed the word of God. You know, if you can't pray the word if you don't know the word. And the bush. No 